Hey everybody, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March, and today's video is the best the, of the best of 2022, the cream of the crop, the books that rose to the top in my reading life last year. So I wanted to skip my intro today so I could have a little more time to talk about these awesome books. Now what I did this year, I said this in my worst of video last a couple days ago, is I'm showing you fewer books this year because I wanted to highlight the most special of these two groups. I have two groups. And I didn't want to make a project out of trying to find the top 10 or the top 12 or whatever it was. At one point I was thinking I was going to get the top book for every month, but I, I, that was too complicated for me. I, it was too much, too much work. And I'm a low maintenance kind of a girl. So we're going to do this. What I want to talk about today is I have six books that were my best four star books of last year. And the why do I even highlight four star books? Because these books are still great. And you may read them and think they're five star books. And a four star book is a really good book. And I highly recommend each one of these books. And so I wanted to show them to you. I think for the last couple of years, I've done a best of four star books. And uh, I again, they're, they're great books and I would love to recommend them. Um, for whatever reason, they weren't perfect for me, uh, whether it was the book itself, the content, the writing style, or the experience. So yeah, but I, I would throw these into your hands, every single one of them, even though I rated them four stars. So let me show you what they are. These are in no particular order. I wanted to say that right up front. I have two nonfiction and four fiction. So I'll show you the nonfiction first. This one is Zero Fail by Carol Leonig, and this is The Rise and Fall of the Secret Service. This is the US Secret Service. Excellent book, so illuminating. I mean, I learned everything from the inception of the Secret Service to how it worked with every US president. This started at Lincoln and it goes by president. So she manages to show you how the Secret Service um, acted and changed with every president's different style. The Secret Service of the earlier presidents is extremely different than the, the Secret Service for um, Barack Obama or Donald Trump. But one of the lasting legacies of the Kennedy assassination is the the drastic change in the role and the scope of the American Secret Service. Um, there, it was very transparent based on the information in her book of all of the failures that they analyzed and they found after the Kennedy assassination. And it was a great book. Um, it does get listy with a lot of lists of names and people. And so it can get, um, very heavy with the names of people and it's a little difficult to keep everybody straight but i loved the book i thought it was so good the information was great she's an excellent writer and i highly recommend that one the other non-fiction book is no surprise to anybody my life in middlemarch by rebecca mead i read this earlier in the year this is a lovely book talking about her love for middlemarch and for george Eliot. One of the things I have to say, though, if, if you have not read every one of Elliot's novels, there will probably be spoilers in this book. I actually started reading this years ago before I read all of Elliot's novels, and I almost, I had to, I put it aside then because I knew I'm, I'm going to pick it back up after I read the novels, and that's what I did. And I really, really enjoyed this book. She goes through you know, her experiences and her love of George Eliot's writing. She talks about a lot of the characters in Eliot's books, a little bit of Eliot's background, but it's a, it's a lovely book. It's wonderful if you're a George Eliot fan, hello. And I really, really enjoyed this. So highly recommend that to anybody who also loves George Eliot. Okay, I had the, the other four are all fiction. They're all novels. The first one is The Murmur of Bees by Sofia Segovia. And this is translated um, from, I think this is in Spanish. Yes, by Simon Bruni. This is, I just loved this book. This is a kind of a family saga, magical realism, 
um, a little bit of witchcraft and a little bit of family legacies and lore, fam, familial lore. Um, but it was just a beautifully written book and I absolutely loved the story. This is the story about an an old woman who is kind of the grandmother in the in the community, also thought of as possibly a witch or a magical woman. Um, she finds a disfigured uh, baby boy covered in bees. He's not stung. He's never stung. And the bees stay with this young boy. She takes him back to her home, her family's home, and he ends up being raised with them as a son. And it's just such a beautifully written story. There's a mystery, there's a little bit of violence, there's backstory and uh, magic, um, so much to do with bees. I loved it. I love, I love stories and books about bees. Um, but I thought this was just beautiful. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't even know what else to say about this. Um, there's this little baby boy is covered with this blanket of bees. And of course, there's all kinds of superstition as to whether this little boy is possessed or if he's evil or if he's he himself is magic. And we learn all of the facts in the background for these characters. Um, and by the end of the book, it, it's a very satisfying ending. So I loved it. I love the story. Would love to see people read that and enjoy it. Let's see. I will show you this one next. This one is Remembrance by Rita Woods. This is another book with a little bit of magical realism in it. And this is a novel about slavery and a secret magical community that slaves escape to and that slaves are privy to this information. Uh, the, it's named Remembrance. And eventually the community of Remembrance starts to break down and there starts to be some cracks in the magic that surrounds this place. There is discussion of slavery and escape from slavery. It's it's not the easiest book to read emotionally, um, but I also believe novels like this are important. They, they document stories, even if this is all fictional based on history. It was still a really good book. I loved the story. Um, this was a book that I was really looking forward to picking up every day. And I, all of these, I will say that about all of these books, but I really enjoyed this one. Um, again, there was, there was some magic, magical realism, if you want to call it that. Wonderful characters, wonderful relationship links. And I really enjoyed that one. This one is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. Uh, what a, an awesome debut, excellent debut novel. And this is the story of a Caribbean woman who dies and she leaves this recipe for black cake to her two grown children. Um, <clears throat> but there's a backstory and there's family history and there's a lawyer that they both have to work with. And the lawyer needs to take a lot of time to tell them the story of their mother and this cake and what they're supposed to do with it, and what they're supposed to do about it, and what is it exactly that they inherit. It's a, a family mystery, family legacies of things that are brought down through generations. Uh, the mother is not who she is, not who she appeared to her children as. There's so much to unpack, and the food, the descriptions of the food, the descriptions of this cake, but also other foods, it's just mouth-watering. And I absolutely loved it. This was such a phenomenal debut novel. Um, run out and read that if you haven't read it yet. And the last of my best four-star books is The Searcher by Tana French. This is a standalone. This is not part of her Dublin Murder Squad series, um, but this is an awesome book. And I read this with Britta as a buddy read early in the year. And... Um, I loved it. This is the story of a retired ex-cop from Chicago, Cal Hooper. He decides to buy this dilapidated Irish cottage in a remote Irish farming village. He, he wants a, a quiet, tranquil life. He wants to be left alone after a divorce. Uh, he has a daughter. He just wants to slink off and have a quiet life. 
but mystery follows him. And in this tiny little Irish village, there is a missing person, uh, slash whether it's a murder mystery. What is the, What are the secrets in this little Irish town? Who is the person that keeps coming up to this man's house and watching him? Um, what is he searching for? So just a great book. I love Tana French's writing style. Um, very mysterious, so well crafted in her writing, very lush writing at times, but this particular book, the setting is very tranquil and isolated. And I thought that was a very interesting combination for her writing. So I really loved it. I think everybody should read that one as well. Everybody should read every single one of these books because, you guys, these are the best of the best for me for 2022. Okay. dun dun dun, dun. Drum roll. I don't know how to do a very good drum roll. But the next pile are my best five-star reads, the best of the best from 2022. Uh, many booktubers say this. These were not all published in 2022. I don't even know if any of them were. I don't even think so, possibly. But I read them in 2022. So uh, these were the best books, best reading experiences that I had. Also, they are not in any particular order except for the very last book, maybe the last two. And that'll become obvious. Talk about bees. This is The Bees by Lelaine Paul. Lelaine Paul. This was so unusual and such an, a weird story. It's basically all about climate change and conservation and bees. What happens when the bees die? This is a book where the bees are anthropomorphized and they act like humans. So we're, we're investigating a colony of bees and what they need to do to find food, what they need to do to strengthen the queen, how they interact as far as foraging and the lifespan of one bee. Uh, it was just amazing and fascinating and very, very unusual. It's kind of a dystopian bee story. How the bees interact with humans. What happens to the hive. Um, just so many different things. And you can relate everything back to humans in the same situation. It's It reads like a, a kind of a fantasy dystopian story. And it's a very big story until we realize that this is just a little beehive. And it was so cool. I absolutely loved it. One of the biggest surprises of my last year as a five-star book. I just picked it up not expecting it at all. Excellent writing. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, yeah, the, the probably the biggest book that took me by surprise last year. This was another one that uh, was extra very surprising. I wasn't expecting this. And I've said this before when I reviewed it. This is a book I found by chance at the Dollar Tree and bought it for a dollar only because I recognized the author's name and I hadn't read it for so long. It was on my shelf for so long. And I finally read it for Pride Month last year. And it's The Gods of Tango by Carolina de Robertis. She is the author of Cantoras. Cantoras, I cannot roll my R's. This was awesome. This is the story of a young girl in 1913. She's 17 year old Lita. She is taught by her father how to play violin and her father is musical and wants to teach her things but she's not allowed to learn. She needs to leave her little Italian village and travel to Argentina, Buenos Aires. But she can't show up there with nothing and with a violin in her bag and try to make money as a musician as a girl. So she does something drastic. And that is the gist of the story. Uh, the descriptions of Argentinian society and community and food and dancing. Oh, it's the dancing. <laughs> It was just a phenomenal book. It, beautiful writing, awesome story, little bit of mystery, suspense, literary construction. It was so good. I absolutely loved this book and it was well worth a dollar. <laughs> well worth a dollar. The next one, um, Amy Lowell is uh, Selected Poems edited by Honor Moore. 
Uh, I'm not a big poetry fan, and I don't read a, a lot of poetry. I probably read the most poetry last year than I've read in a while. I think I read maybe four poetry collections. I loved this one. This is a collection of love poems to Amy Lowell's partner, longtime lover. I just, they blew me away. And there were a few that just didn't make sense to me and I thought they were a little out of place in this collection, but they were so beautiful and surprising and understandable. Um, this was Amy Lowell lived, she was born in 1874 and she died in 1925. She posthumously won the Pulitzer in Poetry in 1926, and she was a New Englander. She was born in Boston, Massachusetts. They were just beautiful poems, um, a lovely collection. Uh, this is my Library of America edition, and I just was so happy that I read it, and I have not forgotten this. Um, just the, the content, but also the reading experience of, of these books. And when I give a book five stars, it's partly due to the reading experience for me. I can't I can't remove that from the quality of the writing or the characters or the pacing. It's all it's all wrapped together. One of the best and most infuriating nonfiction vote, uh, books that I read early last year was One Person No Vote by Carol Anderson. Um, I still have all my tabs in there. If you don't know what gerrymandering is, you need to read this book. If you are unaware of how the American government uh, practices voter suppression primarily against um, black communities, how they make it harder for black people to vote, what they've done over the years to split up the maps, the county maps, the state maps, the city maps, in order to get the vote advantage. It is infuriating and every high school student should be assigned this book. It's short, it's easy to read and easy to understand. It will piss you off if you are an American and have voted in this country in the past. It is just uh, phenomenal. And I won't ever forget this. I will probably reread this more than once. Carol Anderson is a phenomenal author. And this should be required reading. This should be part of political classes and um, political theory, and it, it should be taught to everybody, especially everybody who votes, and high school seniors, if not juniors. This should be taught in high schools. Excellent book. Okay, the last two. Probably my the best two for me of the year. Um, let me tell you, I had, in total last year, I rated 33 books five stars. So I'm just showing you six of them. And to go backwards, I actually rated um, 56 books, four stars, <clears throat> and I only showed you six. So I wanted to narrow that down like that, um, basically to show you the best of the best and uh, fewer titles with more time for me to gush over them. But I only rated 33 books of five stars. That's only, but it's, it's still a lot. It was a great reading year. These two, these are top two. Um, similar themes, but... They just stuck with me and they struck me and they hit me in the gut and they hit me in all the feels and they deserve the top two spots. The first one is Corregidora by Gail Jones. This is the story of a legacy of slavery in a family, uh, a slave owner who uh, rapes and impregnates one woman after another after another, but he rapes and impregnates one woman and then she bears a daughter, and as the daughter gets older, he rapes and impregnates her as well, and so on, through the generations. <clears throat> and it's the story of uh, historical violence, um, family violence. Uh, there's a lot in here about domestic violence and what the trauma, the generational trauma, and the legacy of slavery does to a current day woman. And what she, what she what she remembers and how she deals with remembered trauma um what it's what what is possible for her to deal with all at once how resilient can she be the story is awesome but the writing is just amazing and gail jones really just put something on the page here that's special and she was actually um quote unquote discovered by tony morrison uh corregidora was published in 1975, um, 
yeah, this is, it's an amazing book. Very difficult read. Very, very difficult to read, but um, incredible. Loved it. The last book probably is not going to be a surprise to anybody, but this is The Trees by Percival Everett. I think there's so many booktubers that had this as their book of the year. Well deserved. Um, uh, I think, I think it was Shelley Swearingen that was talking about this book. It's the only book that I've ever read that is so hilarious and so disgusting at the same time. I couldn't, it's hard to wrap your brain around that. The, the satire, um, the, the humor, the, it's almost as if he's writing deadpan humor, the violence, the rage, the, again, a legacy of slavery, um, just an amazing book. This, the trees refer to lynching trees. And if you can, I don't know if you can see this, but on the cover of the book are those, these little shadows are names. And he lists out all these names of people who have been lynched. And these are not imaginary people. Those are real names of real people who were killed um, during the Jim Crow era. And there's talk of Emmett Till in the book. And th this is a novel. But he starts the novel by um, the murder of two white men who end up being white supremacists, racist, coming from supremacist families, long line of racism in the family. Very violent deaths, but also with them there lays a body of a black man. And when they go to um, clean up the scene and retrieve the bodies, the black man's body is gone. What happened? And it, we the story goes from there. It's set in Money, Mississippi, uh, which is a real town. And you, if you read, it's so well paced and plotted. But if you read a little more slowly, you see all the places where he drops such funny phrases and funny names and funny characterizations among the violence and the anger and the trauma and the rage over slavery, it's about um, it's about his a history of American racism. It's about uh, family abuse again, generational trauma, crimes against Black people, crimes against allies to slaves and enslaved people. Just a phenomenal book. Um, an amazing writer that I just discovered last year with this book. I, I had a whole rant of how angry I was about that. Um, but this is just uh, incredible. An incredible literature, literary achievement. So everybody that I know should read that book. Those are it. Those are the best books for me for 2022. I hope you, do, you enjoyed uh, the video. I hope you read some of these books. Let me know below if you have. Let me know, give me a title or two of the best books for you last year. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.